Hello, uh, my name is Alf Dubbs, I'm a member of the House of Lords and I'm a humanist. I've been invited to talk uh, on prison radio uh, as a humanist. Uh, you probably know that as any religious prisoners have the right um, to chaplains of their particular faith, so non-religious prisoners also have the right to humanist visitors. However, that's not possible at the moment, as you understand, because of the virus. And so some of us from Humanist UK uh, have been asked to talk on prison radio uh, about themes that, ma that matter to us. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit, little bit about my background. Um, uh, I, I, I was born in Prague. I came to Britain to escape the Nazis on a kinder transport run by that marvellous man, Nicholas Winton. Uh, he came to Prague in 1938-39, saw what was happening to people, particularly Jews, uh, with the threat of the Nazis and then the occupation by the Nazis, and he helped to organise children out of Prague on kinder transport, as other people did from Germany, Austria and other countries. Uh, I remember the German invasion, I remember, uh, I, I, I remember how German soldiers everywhere. We had to tear a picture of the Czech president out of our school books. I was six years old, uh, and stick in a picture of Hitler. And my mother put me on a train. Uh, anxious parents, not knowing whether they'd ever see their children again. Uh, German soldiers in the background with swastikas. The older ones knew what was going on. As I said, I was six years old, and I don't think I really understood, except it all seemed rather dramatic. Anyway, the train, uh, long train journey, but on hard wooden seats, you don't mind if you're a six-year-old. I didn't know anybody on the train, there were a couple of hundred of us, I think. And, and, and so we proceeded uh, on the train to the Dutch border. Um, um, I was looking out for windmills and wooden shoes, I couldn't see any. The older ones cheered because they were out of reach of the Nazis. And then uh, the Hook of Holland, Harwich, and then to Liverpool Street, where we were met with our dog dog tags and allocated to relatives, family or, um, or or people who would foster us. So that was the story of my journey. <coughs> if it hadn't been for the kinder transport, I don't think I'd have survived the Holocaust because I'm half Jewish myself. And uh, so I got involved in politics. Uh, I got involved in politics because I was passionately trying to, uh, trying to understand why what had happened to me had happened. And so I... Um, I eventually went into politics and, and uh, into the Commons and then, and then got in the House of Lords. One of the issues about which I'm particularly uh, concerned is that of refugees, especially child refugees, understandably given my own background, uh, but although the cause is important regardless of whether the person advocating it has been a refugee himself or herself or not. Anyway, what happened was that in 2016, the Syrian crisis, Syrian wars, and people fled Syria happened. And we learned that there were 95,000 unaccompanied child refugees somewhere in Europe. Um, some of them were in uh, northern France, some were in Greece, and, and, and in Italy. And I moved an amendment in Parliament that we should take some of these children who had no, uh, no family here, but uh, who were absolutely vulnerable to... Vulnerable to uh, to, to to criminals, vul vulnerable to prostitution, vulnerable to trafficking, very vulnerable young people, frightened, frightened, and on their own. Some had travelled months to get um, to get to get to Europe from Afghanistan, Syria, or parts of Africa. So the amendment eventually, uh, the government accepted the amendment. Uh, they they opposed it initially, and then they accepted the amendment. Uh, because they realised that public opinion had suddenly woken up to what was happening. I should say, by the way, that in the refugee camps, or, um, or what's left of them, there are young people, volunteers, who are giving lo a lot of time and effort of, of their lives to help other people who are very vulnerable, and that's a real, a real humane and humanitarian and humanist thing to be, thing to be doing. I went to uh, Calais, the jungle, and, and after it was pulled down to what was left of it, and I also went to the Greek islands. The conditions were terrible there, uh, not just young people, but young people uh, lying, uh, sleeping in, uh, under tarpaulins, and no shelter, nobody to look after them, vulnerable, frightened, uh, anxious to find safety, 
and 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 uh, you know without without much hope until Britain and other countries say yes you can you can come to us. Now there's a part of the European Treaty called the Dublin Treaty which allows children who've got family uh, in a, in another EU country to join them. That's from one EU country to another, and um, again. Uh, we wanted to continue that after Britain left the EU, and and that was another amendment that I moved. And again, w again, eventually the government uh, accept accepted it so with with a quite a lot of argument. So we've got children who've got no family here, and children who've got family here, and some of them are waiting and waiting to come to Britain. If they can't get here legally, then what they do is they, they they go on the back of a truck or they come on a dinghy. Very very dangerous, and so I think. Uh, I think it's one of the most important things how we look after refugees. Uh, I don't think Britain should take them all by any means. Uh, I do think we should share responsibility along with other, along with other European uh, European countries. So that's one of the causes. It's not only a humanist cause, but it's one of the causes that uh, the, the, that I, that I feel very very close to, and I'm still involved and, and active in it. Let me uh, let, let me say uh, say say something else. I've got a I've got a poem here by by W. H. Auden. It's called Refugee Blues. I'd like to just read a little bit of it because it sums up some of my feelings and sums up some of the things that are happening uh, or happened in happened in the past. It was written in the 1930s. I'm just reading extracts from it. Say this city has 10 million souls. Some are living in mansions, some are living in holes. Yet there's no place for us, my dear, yet there's no place for us. Once we had a country and we thought it fair, looked in the atlas and you'll find it there. We cannot go there now, my dear, we cannot go there now. And then about, it goes on about passports. The consul banged the table and said, if you've got no passport, you're officially dead, but we are still alive, my dear, we are still alive. Went to a committee, they offered me a chair, asked me politely to return next year. But where shall we go today, my dear? But where shall we go today? Came to a public meeting, the speaker got up and said, If we let them in, they'll steal our daily bread. We're talking about you and me, my dear. We're talk we was talking of you and me. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe, saying they must die. Oh! We were in his mind, my dear. Oh, we were in his mind. Walked through a wood, saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians and sang at their ease. They went the human race, my dear. They went the human race. Dreamed I saw a building with a thousand floors, a thousand windows and a thousand doors. Not one of them was ours, my dear. Not one of them was ours. Stood on a great plain in the falling snow. Ten thousand soldiers marched to and fro, looking for you and me, my dear looking for you and me. And that's the end of that poem. I think it's pretty moving, uh, and, and I always have a tear in my eye when I, when, when, when I read it or when I, when, I, when I think of what it describes. And finally, just a bit of music, just a bit of music I like. I like lots of bit of music, but this might be a, a more cheerful uh, and sentimental end to my talk. Thank you very much for listening to me.